team. And, and uh, uh, um, uh, but uh, this but the way this, of China operating, the way of China in operating case, we tend to work case, within a team, work within rather than team, like individual rather than like individual or professors or lectures, or, like or lectures, uh, like Western uh, uh, Western uh, countries, uh, uh, countries in China. Uh, uh, in China, uh, uh, sort of uh, is a uh, uh, characteristic. Uh, uh, um, we have, uh, of, um, course, Louis we have uh, of course, Louis as a professor. Uh, uh, Louis and myself uh, are professors. Uh, Louis and myself also have professors. We also have a, a, guest, professor, a guest professor, a uh, sir, uh, professor from, uh, sir, uh, Central Florida from, uh, University, Central USA, Florida University, and he USA, is come to and he uh, is not University, to, uh, not uh, uh, three, three months, uh, uh, three year, months, uh, a year. Uh, this year. Uh, um, and this because year, because of the because of the the virus did not come, and. And, and uh, we also have uh, uh, three, we also uh, have young, uh, three three young members, uh, young assorted young professors, members, three assorted um, professors, um, a professor, um, assorted uh, professor, uh, assorted uh, professor, uh, assorted professor, uh, assorted uh, professor, assorted 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 also part and, of our uh, project. And also a professor, and, uh, and also a sort of professor. Uh, we have quite, uh, uh, we a have quite uh, uh, a number of uh, uh, graduate students, postgraduate uh, students, postgraduate uh, students, non PhD students, uh, include non PhD students, and 23 masters and 23 masters students, uh, master's um, students. Uh, from uh, uh, September, from uh, uh, Louis September, and I, uh, Louis have, uh, and I, I think another three or four. Uh, Doctor students, another three or four coming in. Doctor students, so, uh, as a moment, so because so, the uh, as a moment, so it's very new. Our team is very new, so we tend and the North East students have so we tend uh, more doctor students coming in than uh, uh, graduating. So we graduating expect to some expect to some students graduate, graduate, graduate uh, 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 some master uh, students, like some master doctor students might graduate, might doctor students might graduate in two years time, say in two years time. For master students. Uh, uh, for master's students, students uh, is the, uh, uh, the, the term of study is, uh, is uh, the term of study is. Uh, I think uh, now it's a three years. And you uh, I think now it's two and a half years. years. So, so I want we already got, got some ready. ready. Uh, uh, um, uh, the northeastern university, uh, North university, about, university uh, you must uh, about uh, ten million arm uh, 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 arm uh, 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 about one point one point one point five one point five one point five US dollars a million US dollars. To purchase equipment uh, and the instrument for uh, and uh, instrument developing for, uh, uh, called, uh, uh, developing uh, advanced, uh, uh, advanced uh, power metallurgy uh, technology, uh, uh, technology, uh, uh, technology research and technology research sort of like a special characteristic laboratory, laboratory because uh, the, as, this energy, as this university uh, it, uh, it does not have does not have such kind of power metallurgy laboratory laboratory before and uh, and um, because it's the because power metallurgy, the power metallurgy uh, laboratory uh, laboratory we have uh, the uh, 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 a series of a series uh, equipment of uh, equipment uh, uh, instrument and uh, uh, instrument so that's including um, uh, like uh, uh, some milling machines and and one large scale uh, uh, milling machine for milling machine, uh, uh, furnaces for heat treatment, uh, a large scale atomizer so we can produce the atomized uh, uh, powder, uh, and uh, we have uh, vacuum uh, sintering furnace for sintering, and wet hot press uh, for uh, hot pressing. Uh, we also ha have um, uh, 200 ton and 800 ton. Uh, yeah, sorry, this is wrong. A functional sumo mechanical powder consulting systems. Uh, if you look at it, it looks like a, a 200 ton or 800 hydraulic press, but uh, that is not 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 the uh, the only story. It really has got a furnace and got an atmosphere chamber and sort of a combination, and so it's a, it's a become a multi-functional uh, uh, powder consolidation system. And with this, we can use to extrusion, uh, forging, or combination of extrusion forging. Uh, we're also going to have a, a cold spray system. Uh, the funding is already there, so we're uh, in the process of purchasing this system. And uh, uh, we also have uh, um, uh, crib testing uh, machines and fatigue testing machines, and a, a, a digital uh, imaging cor uh, cor correction system for tensile testing. Uh, we have glove boxes. Uh, notice, of course, uh, we see uh, doing research involving powder, the uh, 3D printing become uh, quite important uh, um, uh, 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 sort of a process, a quite important uh, 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 technique. So we uh, we're going to have a, a selectively printing machine. 
uh, uh, by laboratory standards, uh, um, the size for preparing a, a component uh, or samples is quite large. Um, we're going to install this uh, machine in about uh, you know one or two uh, months, in you know, about two months time. Uh, yeah. So I, I, before I, I further go go to, through the presentation, I'd like to uh, mention the uh, or, or acknowledge the uh, um, contributor to this presentation. Of course, uh, over uh, my uh, professional life, uh, over the last ten, uh, so nearly uh, about fifteen years, uh, when when I seriously uh, uh, did research on uh, powder metallurgy, uh, I have uh, a number of uh, PhD students and. Number of master students, also uh, 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 colleagues, uh, uh, academic colleagues uh, working uh, with me. Uh, so, um, if I mention them all, there will be a long list. And uh, and the work I'm going to present today is only part of the uh, our work uh, uh, in this area. Um, so this is really the uh, uh, the work from uh, these people, uh, Ming, Dr. Ming Tu Jia uh, from. Uh, um, University of Waikato in New Zealand, and he's still working there. And also we have uh, uh, Dr. Yi Feng Zheng and uh, Yi Fei Liu and Dr. Jia Wenliang from Shanghai Jiao Tong University um, in China. And uh, at Northeastern University, of course, we have uh, uh, support from like uh, uh, Louis uh, Deng Shan, Xiao Li, Hong Zhi, um, uh, Ji Ping, uh, and uh, Lei Meng and, and Hai Ri. Um, um, Harry and Lei are a PhD student, and Ji Ping, uh, um, a master student who has uh, graduated. Um, so, just say, uh, again, as I said, I use a sort of a few uh, sort of uh, example to the uh, sort of a uh, um, modified powder material process, which involve uh, thermal mechanical powder consolidation and forming or shaping uh, to produce a. Uh, um, uh, low cost uh, and, uh, and uh, high performance uh, metallic uh, um, structural members or metallic materials uh, in the form of, form of structural members and also near uh, near net shaped uh, components. Like in other words, sometimes like a casting, you know, uh, sometimes we just want to uh, want this material to have uh, the uh, the shape of component directly. So we. We also do that. Um, yeah, the the, uh, the first part is on titanium. Uh, of course, the, our project is really uh, involve iron alloy, like steel. I, in my presentation, I do not have any uh, uh, slide on steel yet. Um, uh, we sort of uh, just uh, start working on that. Uh, but uh, before, we in, uh, our work mainly focus on titanium alloys and aluminum alloys, and, and sometimes uh, also metallic composites. And, and um, to small uh, amount, we do some work on uh, brass and copper. Yeah. So uh, for uh, for this uh, process, we of course we start with powder. So in this case, uh, hydrogenated and hydrogenated titanium alloy powder. And um, uh, about ten years ago, or, or yes, I think about ten or, or twelve, twelve years ago, we start work on um, producing uh, parts. Like uh, this, this one is the uh, rocker arm, rocker arm uh, uh, for in, uh, combustion engines, uh, using a press powder compact folding. But uh, um, when we uh, fold uh, this, uh, so this this folding, we get this part. So, but before we get this part, we uh, uh, we design a intermediate shape. So, this, in other words, this shape is not the shape of the final part. So, this uh, is unlike uh, the traditional powder metallurgy process. The traditional powder metallurgy process, uh, I know some of you uh, in the physics, uh, like Louis, come from physics background. You probably wouldn't uh, know much. About about powder metallurgy before. Um, so with the powder metallurgy, uh, normally we have a powder and then we use a press to uh, and mold to produce, a, uh, to press the powder into, uh, say, normally into this kind of shape first. Uh, and then just put this uh, compact 
into a, uh, like a vacuum furnace. For titanium, we need a vacuum furnace. For um, uh, for steel, like the powder material steel um, uh, material, uh, we can just put in a, a furnace uh, and, and use like a nitrogen and hydrogen uh, mixture uh, to protect the uh, ascension. And so then just center after ascension, that will be, become the part which will be used. But this process is that we, we uh, intermediate shape uh, because, because uh, this shape need to, to allow further deformation in order to produce the final shape. So, um, so we heat this one up using a uh, nitrogen in in under, of course, under inert atmosphere, and then fold it to produce the uh, part. So, so really just like a, just one pressing uh, will produce the, uh, this. So during this process, we get the shape, but also we get to the material because the, the material would, uh, um, uh, uh, as you consolidate it. So we examine the art by uh, uh, producing samples from uh, different uh, locations in the part, and then uh, uh, examine the, uh, like metallurgy quality to see uh, whether there are many pores or cracks inside here, and find that the, um, uh, we uh, like a cl very close to the surface of the part, we have some pores. Uh, very small pores, and the fraction is not so large. But uh, towards the middle, it's very much uh, dense. So, so it's fully dense. And then we examine the macro structure uh, because the uh, uh, was uh, formed in the uh, at high temperature in what we call beta field. So that means that when the uh, power, uh, powder was the, uh, deformed at that temperature, the uh, uh, titanium was in beta phase. And, and then, of course, after forming, it will cool down. So it transforms into uh, alpha phase, you know, alpha phase. Or most of them will transform into alpha phase. But the, uh, the beta phase will be left uh, at the, the boundaries. The boundary. So it has this, this lamella structure. This is a typical, so for those who know about in alloys, they you know that it's got because they have this beta alpha transfer, transformation. So you tend to have the um, the, uh, the laminar structure, but of course, the, if we do a small mechanical processing of the material uh, at lower temperature structure, so, yeah, and we test the uh, mechanical properties of this material. Um, this one has a little bit of uh, uh, oxygen, like a uh, zero point four percent of oxygen in it, so this, the strength is quite high, and uh, with a higher uh, metallic quality. We had the, uh, um, the elongation about eight percent, which is uh, for titanium alloy, and the strength is very high. Um, so we we produce uh, like a, a number of uh, this uh, part, uh, uh, heat treatment, and that like for, for pure titanium, if we use pure titanium, um, uh, after heat treatment we can get is quite good property, like uh, you know with tensile strength about seven hundred. Uh, 750 megapascal and elongation to fracture to about 28 percent very much reflect the the true uh the true properties of uh, titanium uh for, for the folding the properties are not as good as uh, slightly lower than the power metal uh, the ingol metallurgy not power ingol metallurgy one but uh if we do a proper like a, a it's a special heat treatment like recrystallization heat treatment to get uh, sort of equi-x uh, uh, grins and um, uh, we can get uh, like a quite fairly good probably good strength and uh, elongations over 10 percent so, which is a really good um, yeah uh, the uh, um, for this material we like it sort of related to this technology we sort of uh, take this technology and further develop this technology in uh, industry application. So we sort of like uh, uh, modify this process and combine extrusion and folding uh, together. So here like a titanium hydride powder, but it does not have to be titanium hydride ti uh, titanium powder. So the titanium hydride powder coming from titanium sponge. Uh, as we know, titanium sponge is produced uh, 
in uh, um, in the titanium plant, uh, spawn plant uh, in China. I think uh, it's, uh, it's about each year produce uh, uh, I think probably sixty thousand or yeah maybe around sixty thousand uh, tons of uh, titanium sponge, uh, which is mainly used for producing uh, uh, titanium uh, alloy uh, material using conventional power uh, ingot metallurgy uh, process, and but it can be uh, uh, hydrogenated, so react with hydrogen, produce a brittle uh, hydrogen, uh, uh, titanium hydride uh, uh, sponge, it can be easily grind into powder, um, so it's a powder like this. Uh, and this powder can be either the hydrogenated into a titanium powder, or we, so then we compact this powder in uh, using a, a, a mold, uh, using a, a steel mold to produce a, 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 a compact like this, a powder compact like this, quite nice look. Like this one has a weight of uh, about four kilogram. Uh, so for that, and then we use uh, our uh, develop special develop process, uh, which combine extrusion and forging sort of uh, yeah. Process. This is a part. This is a part. Uh, this uh, uh, is a tower, like a tower with a certain uh, shape. And this uh, this is this side, and this another uh, another side. So uh, this is the. Uh, um, this part, and we also use uh, this part to produce another part with this kind of shape. So, so, um, so you can imagine from this shape, from this shape into uh, this shape. And uh, so we look at the cross sections of this part, like uh, this uh, uh, cover part, and we find that they uh, say sort of a, uh, we don't really have, see any uh, small pores. And there might be Micropores. If we use an optical microscope, uh, we may uh, see uh, some uh, tiny, like uh, you know, a few micrometers, diameter sort of pores. But we certainly do not have any uh, big pores. And we examine the uh, microstructure. Uh, structure. This is the uh, uh, heat treatment. Normally, after we do a annealing heat treatment, and uh, so we get this uh, sort of a, like a. Um, uh, lamella sort of Westman statin structure, and, um, and but of course yeah, with titanium, this is only one example of the mark drug. You can get a different kind of mark drug depending on the uh, heat treatment condition. So this is quite a bit of knowledge um, um, on study of titanium alloy, and uh, so this in, in this particular case we have uh, this uh, sort of discontinuity. Um, the beta, uh, beta um, um, we can also beta lamina, beta discontinue beta phase or beta place uh, in here, but we certainly also have a sort of a, this the uh, um, alpha uh, alpha uh, phase here. And when we test the uh, um, the mechanical property of the material, again this is after the uh, after annealing after annealing heat treatment. And we go to the, uh, the this one got strength tensile strength about uh, um, you know uh, 10 uh, 1050 meg uh, meg Pascal less like 1050 or just about that uh, meg Pascal U strength about uh, uh, just over 950 for titanium alloy this uh, actually is quite good strength and we certainly have a, a good uh, ductility uh, with the uh, elongation to fracture about 10 percent. So about the, uh, the applications applications of uh, uh, of this process, um, there are many applications. The reason why with we not only we not only say this is a high performance as you see in it, but also low cost uh, because the, uh, here we have to go through the melting and casting. So after production of uh, all the process uh, steps sort of just uh, involve uh, uh, solid state process, like uh, mixing the uh, um, titanium powder with other alloy powder, your other element powder, and but the alloying will occur in solid state. So then we don't have to 
use like um, as well for patent in the alloy industry, they have to use the vacuum arc melting, the VR melting furnaces, or um, plasma uh, furnaces, or electron beam uh, melting furnaces. Uh, all this need to uh, melt the titanium. Uh, so that means they have to go to half tender. I suppose uh, most most of us uh, know the titanium, titanium metal uh, is uh, over 1600 degrees, and also um, the metal is very reactive. So so if we have to melt it, in the um, the temperature first the temperature is high. Secondly, um, we have to use a vacuum or you know. Uh, sort of a, a quite expensive equipment. So, and also uh, solidification and casting costs, some, and uh, um, so which require first like a mark structure uh, modification by using forging. So quite a complex process. But with our parametallurgy process, through that sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, that of uh, um, uh, lung process, so really, from the sponge with material, everybody use the same raw material, and to the part like this, uh, it's actually the it's really a short process, no melting, and the uh, from the of the material, we already demonstrated that the uh, um, uh, the material of the part is as good as the uh, um, uh, or even better. Then the uh, then the part produced by forging from ingot, you know, if you get by ingot or by like a bar, and then do forging to produce a shape like this. This what the uh, uh, the conventional industry is doing now because they don't really have other process to use. So they really take a um, take a titanium alloy bar or, 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 or ingot and then do forging to produce this kind of shape. Or extrusion to produce uh, this kind of shape, uh, uh, but that's you know take a quite a bit of effort and, and, and very costly, and 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 in that process they have to lose a bit of material uh, for reasons like like uh, oxidation and other things. And here we don't have to lose any material. I mean, uh, obviously we cannot say material yield is 100 percent, but it's uh, we can easily say or quite confidently. Say that more than uh, or higher than 95 percent. So that that's the uh, uh, is, uh, yeah. um, of course the uh, because the you know titanium alloys are really good, good materials. Everybody like it because it's really light and corrosion resistant and, and bioavailable with human bodies and things like that. But uh, we don't really see much of the uh, Titanium metal is being used uh, uh, in our life, you know, around us, or especially like uh, cars or uh, bicycles, or, or even in the, uh, like a land-based military, or even in a sort of a normal military. Uh, uh, you don't really use much of the titanium alloys, even though the designer really want because the titanium alloys are so expensive. The alloys are so expensive. The processing is expensive, so when it come to the point of having the part, it become really expensive. So uh, they cannot afford using it. And but with our process, um, we could lower essentially maybe about forty percent. So that means we, we 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 there's a possibility that we will lower the cost to be, to below the threshold or you know like below a certain critical value, so that. The wide scope of application become uh, 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 possible. So, so the the, the areas application like uh, shapes, you know, marine structure, engineering structures, because the environment is quite uh, uh, severe, and it does the. I mean, a titanium metals has so does have a um, uh, advantages over steel, stainless steel. So, it's a, uh, and the good thing is that when you have a, a material which is a corrosion system, you don't have to worry about. Uh, like a painting and other uh, things, um, and medical equipment, of course, because of the light and uh, and also the corrosion resistance. So, if, if you use titanium alloy to replace stainless steel for using um, uh, medical instruments like um, you know scalpels and knives, and uh, it's a, it's a easier for um, you know for, for doctors and and many 
any other errors. So um, this is the thing. So that's about uh, producing a titanium alloy uh, components from uh, a powder. Uh, we also, of course, they, they use uh, the uh, extrusion uh, process, uh, structural members, structural members like bars, uh, rods, bars, uh, or uh, extrusions, you know, with the certain uh, designed cross sectional shapes. So we can do that. So the process is fairly uh, simple. So here, we either have the FPH uh, titanium powder, which is this kind of shape, or uh, uh, or, or a gas atomized powder with spherical shape, and uh, and then compact, compact sort of regular compact, and then heat it up, heat it up under at uh, inert atmosphere, and then uh, put this in the into this uh, extrusion cylinder, and apply uh, a pressure using this uh, plunder, uh, apply pressure, and um, of spread the pressure. Will, or create a stress inside the material and driven by this uh, 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 stress, the material will flow through this uh, extrusion die. And the cross-sectional area of this extrusion die is uh, normally a few times uh, smaller than the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. Uh, we call it extrusion ratio, and the, uh, the extrusion ratio is normally about, say, 5, 10, or or more. So, and this uh, reduction of error is very helpful for us for the powder consolidation because, in order to reduce this error, the particles will have to be deformed and or, or come out. They have to sort of like come together. So, because the temperature, temperature high, but it's non melting, it's just a solid state time, and also being pressed uh, together. So, the, uh, the bonding between the part is established uh, very quickly within, say, seconds, maybe just a few seconds. So, so really, by the time time this the material come out of this extrusion uh, uh, die, or this uh, this uh, you know this like a orifice, the extrusion die, the material being uh, consolidated, so become like same material as uh, uh, the material produced by uh, solvication. Uh, and then uh, uh, extrusion. So we can also produce like this kind of uh, the shape extrusion um, yeah, or tubes. Um, so we start with this is very well. If you use the uh, say uh, at least the uh, uh, powder uh, titanium, uh, pure titanium, we can sort of say the the strength of this is rich. Uh, um, so the, the uh, 700 megapascal, 10,000 strength or 800 uh, megapascal. This is sort of, of course, a different uh, extrusion ratio. So with a higher extrusion ratio, uh, like a smaller diameter means higher extrusion ratio, and uh, the strength is higher because the uh, the mark structure is finer. Um, and also we have this uh, good uh, ductility. Um, when we use the atomized powder, alloy powder, uh, as a raw material and to do the extrusion, the alloy uh, has quite good purpose. So the strength reach uh, like a, a 1500, uh, uh, sorry, no, it's 1000, uh, 1000, uh, like 1140 uh, and, um and the elongation to fractures is over uh, 12, 12%. Uh, of course, the, uh, we don't encourage using uh, atomized Powder because the atomic powder is quite expensive, and um, so uh, of course uh, later on we uh, we want to use the titanium hydride powder to, to replace the uh, uh, titanium powder uh, to produce the uh, um, the structural members. So just for pure, as this uh, Dr. Yi Feng Zheng when he did his uh, PhD study, um, uh, he studied this. So. The, uh, um, so we use the, uh, this is titanium hardware powder, so like a, this is brittle, so after uh, grinding, it produces this kind of uh, uh, irregular, but some, you know, it looks like a brittle particles, you can see, um, so the, the, this uh, powder. And, um, 
and um, act. So again, the, we, we compact, even though it's a little bit brittle, you know, we still can compact this power into um, uh, like, like die press the power to to bring from because we, they are really fine and um, can be we can produce the, uh, uh, the power compact. So then we heat the power compact up uh, in a in a uh, in a furnace in the same way as I shown before and under argon atmosphere and and heat to different temperatures. This uh, in this uh, Kelvin, so you say like 1,000, 1,100 and uh, 1,200 uh, degrees Celsius, so different temperature, and then do the extrusion. So this is the the XRD patterns of the uh, um, of the samples, and those the pure titanium. We don't we don't expect, uh, but but uh, certainly uh, with the lower temperature, a lower temperature we see slight some small amount of uh, titanium hydride stay in there. We don't really see. Certainly from the XRD, we don't really see the titanium hydride. So that means the titanium hydride has been uh, dehydrogenated. So uh, the TRI2 changed into titanium during heating. And, uh, and so we did the, uh, um, the chemical analysis for oxygen and hydrogen sands. And um, so with the lower temperature, lower extreme temperature, the hydrogen, um, the hydrogen content it's like, so it doesn't have a, a bit of a hydrogen there. Uh, certainly, of course, it's reduced quite a bit. And um, with the higher uh, high temperature, the hydrogen content is reduced to this. The oxygen content is slightly reduced. Um, so it looks like the hydrogen does have a little bit of oxidation, uh, sorry, uh, reduction effect. But, the, but as we know, Hydrogen or titanium oxide, and uh, so the effect is limited, but it looks like it is there. So, but it is, this is a good thing because uh, uh, if the oxygen content can it could be reduced by hydrogen. Look at the mass structure. This one is sort of just a conventional. The uh, uh, the colony size is, um, is sort of a, a micrometer, but compared with the uh, the ingot metallurgy ingot. The uh, um, the mass structure is still quite fine, um, but but it's of course it's, it's not very fine here. And when we have this a clear lamella structure, uh, of course with the uh, uh, higher uh, uh, higher extrusion temperature, the uh, lamella thickness become higher. Uh, um, uh, it's cold from higher temperature, so uh, so the cooling rate is uh, smaller. And uh, so we did uh, uh, mechanical testing, the tensile test for the one which produced at uh, one with extreme temperature of 1000 degree. So the strength is like over one uh, over 700 and ductility is not so good. Uh, but with the uh, higher extreme temperature, the strength is lower because the mass factor become coarser. It is, uh, um, um, it's good. Uh, and the best one, one is the, the one with the thirteen hundred seventy three k exponential, like I would say eleven hundred um, degree session. So, yeah. and um, so again, this is sort of the uh, um, the titanium is a sort of because the uh, duct fracture. So when the extrusion temperature is eleven hundred, typical duct fracture, and and this one has the best. Uh, the best uh, um, uh, uh, ductility with the higher extrusion temperature, the strength uh, um, uh, does not really change, but the ductility is slightly reduced because here there's some uh, uh, some coarser um, coarser grain or coarser structure, uh, which uh, sort of uh, which are e easier, which are easier to initiate crack. Um, so this this ductility. Is uh, but with 1,000 uh, uh, degree extrusion temperature, the, the bonding between the powder, powder particles is not, uh, not, uh, not, it's still quite good because the strength is quite high, but it's uh, uh, not as good as the 1,100 extrusion temperature sample. So, 
here there's some uh, evidence that the particles are uh, powder particles are sort of delaminated and uh, disconnect. So that means the bonding. And we examine the the uh, the sample and uh, um, find that of course the material is fully solid and it does not really initiate any uh, cavities inside the material because of the uh, uh, delamination of this. So so not so clear. So really only like even for this uh, sample really only at the the, uh, uh, the correct propagation path it can initiate the bonding of the particles. Yeah. And we did a further heat treatment of this uh, uh, material and uh, um, uh, yeah, of changing the of vacuum annealing and to further reduce the, the uh, uh, produce the mass structure, uh, the mass structure track. And this one gives us a, a good, uh, so it's very good. And uh, um, and we can also produce like a process this titanium hydride powder to uh, um, to make it finer and then use it to produce a titanium. Give us a uh, a different mark structure. Different mark give us higher strength. So so you start with a uh, this a titanium hydride powder. And we boil milk for six hours, and, and um, to get the uh, uh, sort of a sort of nanostructure powder. And then we use the nanostructure powder uh, or nanocrystalline powder to produce the. Um, and now instead of having just a laminar structure, we have this, uh, uh, this sort of a uh, what we call bimodal structure. And this bimodal structure has the cost cutting plate, and um, with the uh, uh, these regions, these regions are really the uh, comb regions, the nanostructural transform regions, and um, so this is a uh, cost plate and this is a so nanostructured uh, 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 regions, and this gives us a very high strength, but uh, quite a high oxygen content of this sample, so the uh, the ductility of this sample is not so good. So then we did the uh, um, annealing, like a 700 degree vacuum annealing, and um, um, so with this annealing, we can produce the uh, material with a fairly uh, uh, good elongation, um, so it's reached about 9%. And um, and recently, uh, we, uh, um, this is uh, Yifei Law's work at Shanghai University, we, uh, um, uh, we produce a, a alloy, you know, titanium-6, Aluminium four with aluminium rod by uh, powder complex uh, um, powder. So the uh, the component I showed you before, which I, I did not mention at the time, we also use the titanium powder mixed with the uh, uh, master alloy. So this aluminium vanadium, this one is called master alloy, and this master alloy power uh, powder mix the two powder together, um, and then uh, the thick extrusion. Uh, we also, also use the um, different extrusion temperature because this alloy rather than pure titanium and uh, so we use slightly higher temperature, 1100, 1200, 1300, and 1400. Um, uh, of course, this alloy is a, it's a, two, uh, it's a alpha beta alloy, so it does have uh, some uh, small fraction of beta uh, phase uh, in here, but the majority of the uh, uh, um, Material is the alpha phase. So with the uh, with the lower with the lower oxygen uh, lower um, uh, extrusion temperature. Remember here we do not really have a separate alloying process. So what the alloying occur during heating and holding. So this one has been holding for five minutes, and uh, the extrusion temperature is also holding temperature. So we look like a with 700 degrees Celsius uh, um, holding temperature. The uh, the alloying the alloying is actually done. It's completed, but the uh, the homogenization of the element look like is not. Uh, uh, or the alloying actually is not so complete yet, and the, the homogenization is not uh, uh, complete. But, but with the others, it look like the um, the more homogeneous um, so structure. Yeah. 
And I said the error is complete because we still have the alpha from actually alpha beta phase. We don't really see any uh, any trace of the uh, um, master alloy uh, in there. So that means that it's been alloyed, but it look like uh, the uh, the uh, the composition is not. Uh, so, so like uh, the mark structure of uh, say this sample is quite similar. This one is slightly uh, different. Right? And the, the more direct evidence is the, is the EDS analysis, elemental analysis. So look, look at you here, you see you have a, um, a small error. Of course, this is just one example of a small error where the uh, vanadium is richer. You know, so here, like a titanium is slightly more de depleted because more vanadium in here. Aluminium is see, the aluminum atoms are diffused really fast because the low melting point uh, uh, metal, so it's tend to in beta phase it tend to be quite active. So so aluminiums, you know, just a sort of uh, um, um, uh, no segregation anymore. But uh, for the vanadium, that is still have some place where it's rich in vanadium. Uh, with the uh, higher extrusion temperature. And also means higher uh, holding temperature. The alloying is uh, really alloying and uh, homogenization is very much completed. So it looks uh, uh, quite nice. And, and and of course, even higher temperature, like 1300, 1400 degree uh, Celsius, that's no problem. Uh, with the increase of temperature, the the lamellar thickness is slightly increased. Um, the more obvious increase is uh, happening. By uh, one with increase uh, extreme temperature from 1100 to 1200. So, um, the, the, like, uh, if it did quite uh, uh, a bit of detailed characterization of the mark structure and find that uh, um, uh, this one, of course, the, again, is a, just this. The, uh, we did not do anything with the powder, did not uh, mix, mail it, or, or any. Anyway. So guess is a sort of cost structure, and uh, um, so the lamellar structure is very regular, and um, so it's really so this uh, when we see lamella, so it's really alpha phase, the bright one, alpha phase, alpha phase, alpha phase, alpha phase, and they tend to have really same crystallograph orientation, but um, it, the, the the grow the, there's a beta, uh, there's a layer of beta. In between this the uh, layer of uh, uh, alpha called alpha lamina, so we have thin layer of uh, beta, and uh, and we did the uh, mechanical testing on this material, and the oxygen content of this material is, the, uh, is about I think they're point four percent. So the elongation is the not uh, the strength is fairly high, and the elongation I think the best one is got elongation to fractures about. Um, Nine percent, so nine percent, the uh, um, um, which is also, you know, it's, it's good, but it's not not uh, not very good. Yeah. And uh, um, the, uh, the fracture behavior is so generally it's a slow ductile fracture, but we still sort of have this, this one, of course, is because of this so the nature of the titanium arrow structure, the laminar structure at I think this at the laminar boundary, we tend to sort of uh, uh, initiate the uh, um, cavity or form cavity at the um, laminar boundary because of the, the uh, incompatibility of the plastic deformation. Uh, for uh, this uh, 1100, for this one, it's really because this one has a, a lower ductility, and you can see this is sort of some like cleavage, some sort of a, a cleavage, and this uh, to make uh, the material. Um, uh, less ductile, yeah. And we examine the the uh, 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 the longitudinal sections of the specimen. Uh, again, it's quite good because we don't really see any separation of the uh, powder particles uh, in the process. And when uh, mark structure uh, of the tensile deformed specimen sample, see the dislocation sort of. Uh, um, uh, generated inside the R, and uh, um, uh, but of course the 
between the alpha laminate or interlaminate uh, beta layer, they sort of uh, capable of uh, sort of uh, uh, block up block up the uh, the slip of the uh, um, of um, uh, slip of the alpha phase, and um, and and so this of course this gives these higher strengths. So that's why the the uh, um, uh, are here. So this this is really the reason why the uh, the yield strength is correlate with the uh, the lamina thickness because the the finer the thickness the uh, the smaller the, the scale for um, for the slip. So then the um, um, the pull up, the drogen pull up, uh, so it's stronger and it can provide a, a better sort of a back stress. And of course, there's a series of uh, consideration on this and um, to relate the mark structure with the, the uh, Of course, the, the here, the beta phase, this is the BCC structure. So it's the, so at uh, when it's high enough, they, their vision will be sort of uh, uh, mobilized uh, inside the, the beta layer. And um, so they still have some sense of, of uh, uh, capabilities of uh, deformation, but it will be sort of controlled by the deformation of the alpha. Okay. So that's about uh, titanium. For titanium, of course, uh, we mainly use the, uh, um, the powder. And um, for aluminium, we can also use powder. But uh, uh, we also do some work on uh, on using uh, titanium alloy powder. So, at, at, because of the uh, limited of the time, uh, I, I cannot include that uh, into this uh, um, presentation. Um, but we also spend uh, quite a bit of uh, um, effort, use quite a bit of effort to study the what we call uh, solid state recycling and forming of metal machining chips. We continue. To, to uh, um, continue to do that, and um, so the raw material, raw material could be uh, like a A35 alloys. It's the aluminium, seven uh, percent silicon, zero point three percent magnesium machining chips, or um, uh, this is the extrusion alloy, sixty-six three, uh, sixty-six three, or sixty-six one. Well, sixty-six three is the got this composition. 0.7% of magnesium, 0.5% silicon. Uh, we also had uh, one master student who did research on, on brass. So we start with the uh, brass wires. Uh, the bar has been used uh, used in uh, EDM cutting. Uh, so it's a, sort of a recycled uh, uh, bar. And uh, yeah, here I just mentioned raw material, but we, we I do not have any slides to show the result of this one here. So, so this the uh, um, after we get the uh, the chips, so we do a bit of grinding. So after grinding, so you get uh, produce granules like this, and then we compact the granule into uh, powder compact, uh, uh, similar in a similar way as I showed before uh, for titanium, and then just to use the uh, uh, dye. So we, we prepare a dye. To produce a, a part like this, so this this one is a as hot press part, and this one is the extruded part, and then so the material flow from above here, and then sort of goes through this extrusion part, and then comes through here, spread. So this is like a folding part, we call it uh, a folding part, and um, yeah, and, and then uh, this is a part. So uh, we also use extrusion to produce like tubes like this or, or, or bars with cross-sectional error for um, mechanical testing and study mark structure, things like that. So the advantage of, advantages of this uh, uh, process is that low energy consumption, short process, high material yield, good mechanical properties, and uh, um, um, yeah, because again, we don't have to melt the uh, uh, aluminum alloy. So compare with the traditional metal recycling based on melting and ingot metallurgy. So traditionally, of course, the metals are, especially in China, generally it's recycled. Um, normally we don't throw metals away, so recycle. But but uh, but the uh, conventional way of uh, 
uh, metal recycling is just uh, put a, 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 a small pieces back into the furnace, melt up, produce an ink out, and um, either use it for casting or, or using for ink out metallurgy. Um, but, but in this process, of course, there's oxidation, there's a um, there's sort of evaporation, and there's a sort of like, you know, um, some um, um, uh, like a, uh, some air polluting uh, sort of uh, uh, like uh, some chemicals that come out, uh, which is no good for the environment. So, so compared with that, this process would has the less uh, impact to the environment. But of course, lower energy consumption also has the uh, less impact, uh, also means that it has less impact to the environment. And so this uh, uh, technology can have a wide scope of applications because the uh, metal processing industry, metal or product, metal uh, uh, products or manufacturing industry, there's a large amount of uh, uh, ch chips uh, produced, a really large amount, yeah. So uh, this is one example for a 356 alloy. So this is the, uh, in the hot press part, um, it got this coarse grain, and the, this, is, this is the dark one is silicon particles. So we have the, this look like silicon particles distribute uh, um, along the uh, sort of uh, uh, grain boundaries right here, and we have the coarse grains. And um, uh, in the, uh, the fourth part, you know, after going through the uh, extrusion, and then the uh, uh, forging, we call it uh, extrusion forging part. The uh, um, the silicon particles are more evenly distributed and uh, um, and become smaller, smaller, and uh, yeah. So and and also we we have a finer and slightly finer and more equal the grains. So and, and here is the bigger grains and the bigger grains. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, so this, this one is the, uh, um, this, we just first just talk about the hot press one. So this is the, before the heat treatment, and this is the after heat treatment. So, so after heat treatment, the particles uh, sort of uh, become more spherical. This is still hot press one, we still call this uh, uh, large greens. And, and this one is better. So this one is the uh, extrusion forge part, extrusion forge part, and uh, um, so here the greens are, are finer, so finer greens, and more even distribution of the uh, silicon particles. And uh, after heat treatment, uh, the uh, these greens uh, uh, become coarser because uh, there's green coarsening, and uh, but some small some uh, small greens are, uh, left here. So so yeah, so these uh, are the uh, these pictures are for the uh, extrusion forge part. So that means the, the part which uh, has gone through here. This one. So really this one. So the hot press by this one, which so that the, the amount of deformation of material is limited here. But uh, when the material comes through here, the amount of deformation is, uh, is higher because the material already going through this extrusion, and then this is sort of a, a further deformation through this uh, forging. So, is the, uh, um, so that's why we have this uh, very fine grains, fi uh, fine grains you know, like this, and also the ceiling part are finer because of some broken. And with the uh, uh, heat treatment, the heat treatment is a solution of heat treatment, quenching and aging. So during heat treatment, the ceiling part will uh, become uh, more like a spherical shape, and, but the greens become coarse. So, and this, this is sort of uh, examining the mark structure using uh, TEM. As you can see, the uh, after heat treatment, we have this uh, uh, precipitate in here, and so when we did the, the um, uh, when we did the uh, mechanical testing. Find before the heat treatment, of course, the strength is lower because we do not have the uh, precipitate hardening. Uh, uh, but you see the extrusion fault part has the uh, higher strength and better tactility. And the, uh, but the, the just hot press part 
a, a strength lower, a stre yield strength similar, but the tensile strength lower, and the ductility is uh, smaller. And uh, here with the extrusion fault part, uh, before the heat, uh, uh, of course, the, for the extrusion part, it's still got good ductility, good strength, but the hot press part is the uh, is lower. Uh, the strength here, because we still have this uh, um, uh, this precipitation hardening, but the ductility is, uh, is really low. Um, so there's a good reason for it. So this is a summary of the um, kind of properties. And if you look at the fractures, uh, fracture surfaces of specimen, before the uh, uh, heat treatment, because the strength here, some ductility here, so we still have ductile fracture. But after the heat treatment, we don't see much of the plastic deformation. So it's the fracture uh, surface like this. And for the uh, extrusion fault part, so we have this uh, ductile fracture quite nicely. Uh, for the uh, tubes, for the tubes, when we use the chip to produce the tube, uh, we have this kind of structure. So elongated grains. That's because the uh, the uh, the interfaces, the interfaces uh, between the uh, um, um, between the chips still does not allow the green boundary to go through, so tend to have this sort of shape uh, uh, defined. And um, this this one is a ingot metallurgy, so uh, the tube produced by extrusion of ingot. So we've got the ricus like uh, grins, and it looks like the equax grins, so we don't really have the, the strong characteristic of this uh, elongated, uh, uh, elongation of the uh, grins. Uh, when we look at the, uh, um, uh, the tensile testing, uh, curves the um, the string uh, stress string uh, curves. The uh, uh, this is the ingot metallurgy and this, this uh, recycle one. So they are quite similar. Quite similar. the ductility of this one is much smaller. The strength of this the recycled is smaller because here we got slightly lower uh, amount of uh, um, slightly lower amount of uh, uh, magnesium content. So that uh, gives us a slower strength. So the um, uh, and the ductility is lower is because of the um, is the chips. So, but generally speaking, the uh, pro mechanical properties are quite similar. So not so so much different. And the recycled material uh, also has good good strength, good ductility. And um, so so here right here see the uh, um, uh, so sort of. Uh, uh, ductile fracture. So this is a, and when we look at the longitudinal section, it's sort of uh, um, it's fairly uh, uh, solid. So there are no uh, no cavities in it. When we do the compression, when we do compression, we find that um, the behavior of the sample is quite similar. Of course, the uh, when we compress more, um, like this this three. Uh, samples, samples you see here. So in general, this is a recycle one, and this is the uh, um, um, ingot metallurgy one. So it's fairly similar. There's no, so we don't really see this recycled material is sort of a, a you know, a more easily crashed. So it's a question. If we look at the curve, it's a two stress, two green, 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 green. So it's similar. So um, um, so really, they come to this kind of uh, like about forty percent of strain, uh, the the crack initiation, and you know, of course, when crack initiation, the stress uh, state is uh, complex, so produce this kind of uh, uh, effect. Yeah. So, uh, so in a way, sort of like uh, you know, um, this is a using example. Uh, certainly, from the experimental investigation point of view, we did quite a bit of work. Or we produced a lot of. Uh, 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 data and um, have done a lot of uh, uh, examination, observation, uh, produce a good understanding about uh, consolidated titanium alloys, titanium aluminum alloys, and uh, of course, as mentioned, we also did a bit of work on copper. Uh, we, we did a lot of work on copper matrix alumina nanoparticles work so, um, over the years. Uh, our group uh, really done a lot of work on that. Um, just because of time limit, uh, um, 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 I, I do not uh, include that in here. So, uh, 
So just to give a summary, using titanium sponge as a rule, uh, hydrogenation, uh, grinding, dehydrogenation, uh, small mechanical pattern consolidating and forming, uh, high performance titanium terminal or structure members and components are produced. And this technology is being commercialized. So we have a, um, we work with a company in uh, Sichuan province and uh, the, the already uh, invest uh, to build up a, a, a production plant, a small scale production uh, uh, production line to produce the uh, titanium uh, components, titanium metal components. And also using aluminum alloy machining chips as raw materials, uh, high performance aluminum alloy structure members and components are produced by the uh, sawmill chip consolidating the forming. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, component like you can produce. Yeah. And we'll continue on this. So the other one is the, of this tech, the technology is a short process, good mechanical properties. So we end up with good mechanical properties. Of course, as you see, for some alloys, the the characteristic of the mark structure is not so unique. So similar to the Yingo metallic one. But for any alloys, the there's a unique characteristic of mark structure. But the mechanical properties are still good. And we certainly have low energy consumption and uh, and high material yield. High material yield actually is in for metal industry is actually is not really a, a small issue because they, uh, um, even though it takes a lot of effort to produce uh, like a large quantity of steel, aluminum alloys, you know, the metal uh, materials. But when you see when how when you see how they are used, uh, like you know, if you use say produce use uh, like a um, uh, a steel stainless steel plate to produce uh, say stainless steel cup. Or, or like you know, um, um, you know, just a um, a car. You can see maybe ten percent, twenty percent of those material being waste, and not waste like a, become a small pieces, and then they have to make that go to go back to the furnace to uh, uh, use it to make steel, which is actually is uh, um, uh, not uh, is not ideal. Because the uh, those material are already good material in terms of the uh, metallurgy quality, in terms of purity. So, but once you put them into furnace, they only become metal elements. And uh, so, if we can avoid that, that would be great. Another thing is that, of course, for uh, um, uh, for steel alloy like uh, iron alloy, we also have. A lot of uh, iron powder produced by reduction, and those powder can become raw material for us to use to produce the uh, uh, titanium, uh, sorry, uh, steel parts or steel uh, materials without going through melting. So, you know, the less melting, the less impact to the environment, and the less energy consumption. Uh, obviously, there have to be a, a solid scientific and technological. Uh, work uh, to support this kind of development um, so that we can have an uh, ideal technological solution for this. Yeah. Okay, so let's very much come to the, uh, the, the oh yeah, before I finish this, I need to acknowledge uh, the support of uh, various organizations, of course, not only to mention that uh, funded state and the World Bank, you know, through our colleagues uh, at uh, uh, Peru, uh, in Peru, um, um, and through this uh, uh, our collaborative research. Um, so hope uh, I hope that uh, uh, the project uh, would uh, give us the sort of uh, fruit. And um, for the project, of course, we have done some uh, work, and um, we're, we're going to just the uh, um, consolidate the powder. Um, and to produce the uh, samples and for testing, and um, because of the coronavirus outbreak, it was slightly affected. So by now we should already get the, um, the kind of property data of this. Um, and of course, the other work we uh, received funding from uh, uh, National Natural Science Foundation of China, uh, NSFC, and of course in New Zealand we also received funding from government. 
and um, uh, we in in uh, North Yunnan University received funding from the Department of uh, Education Yunnan uh, Province the government, and uh, <coughs> uh, in China, and also the university gave us a call, uh, to support our research here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think I um, I don't know how long it take. So um, I, that's very much uh, this uh, my uh, talk, and I am um, uh, 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 yeah, I'll be very glad to answer some questions. Yeah. Okay, let me just uh, share. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So how can I? Let me just uh, stop the sharing. Uh, share. Okay. Okay. I I stop the oh. Questions. Eh, si alguno de ustedes tiene alguna pre pregunta, eh, entonces eh, profesor Ángel Bustamante puede empezar a hacer las preguntas si desea. Eh, puede, tiene que activar nuevamente su micrófono. Ok, me escucha. Profesor, profesor, Debian. In Peru, in there, Peru is a, there is a, a lithium. A lithium. It's possible it's to put in your, your compounds, compounds a lithium. lithium. It's, it's, it's small, small. It's only two uh, uh, so or coconut uh, 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 because uh, there is a because there is a you have, to, to, you have to many many holes many so many holes. Like lithium is a lithium to, to place, place in this uh, in this part. part. You, you working, working from, from, from with lithium? lithium? Ah, yeah, lithium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think lithium. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank, thanks, uh, Professor Zhang, uh, for the uh, question. Uh, uh, this, you mean, you mean uh, Peru, Peru has a has a uh, uh, has a this has a medicine, 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 or this mineral? mineral? In mineral, in by, mineral now. by now. Mineral, mineral. So, so that can be that can be that can be that can be turned into metal, right? metal, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, it's, 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 it's possible, it's possible, it's possible because, possible because, because um, um, just very just recently, very recently uh, we, uh, we um, um, uh, recently, uh, recently we, uh, we, 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 we did, did uh, uh, experimental, uh, experimental research on, on uh, producing, producing uh, uh, aluminium, aluminium magnesium, magnesium alloy, alloy, alloy uh, 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 from from uh, alloy uh, chips. Alloy chips. Uh, our colleague, our friend from industry, give us uh, some uh, uh, aluminium lithium alloy chips. And we produce that using our process, uh, the powder compact extrusion process, and the mechanical properties were really good, very good. So, if uh, somehow the lithium, uh, I don't know whether we should uh, try to turn the lithium oxide in to lithium in China or maybe that can be done in Peru, maybe in China because uh, uh, anyhow, if yeah, if the lithium could turn it lithium oxide could be turned into lithium metal and we can use lithium metal and to produce aluminium uh, put into aluminium aluminium <laughs> lithium alloy is very good material because it's lighter than aluminium alloy i think it's about 10 percent lighter than uh, aluminium alloys yes okay thank you very much mm. more questions professor
profesor Ángel Bustamante, ¿tiene alguna otra pregunta más? No, oh, eh, Luis, ya por aquí o voy pasando. Tú. Ok. Ah, pro, eh, profesor eh, Pratapkolu. Pratapkolu. Ay. Ya, hola, hola. Hola, profesor. Your question. Ya, hola, hola. No questions, no questions. Talk is very good. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Narci Boya. Narci Boya. Yeah. The, uh, I think our team is uh, quite a uh, multi, what we call multiple uh, uh, disciplines. Yeah. Because I, uh, I have, I, our work is more like a conventional metallurgy work. Uh, yeah. Try to turn. Of course, Luis, by now, know very well. Uh, we do quite a bit of work, just uh, turning the powders into metal materials. And um, yeah, I have of course, one question. Uh, when we started with the, the sort of... Uh, um, I have one question. Yes. Uh, for example, uh, about the amount of sample. In, For example, the sample that we have brought from Peru, to China are a, a mixture of iron oxides, a mixture of iron oxide. After reducing, uh, it's supposed well, that it will, the amount will decrease. Yeah. About the amount for the consolidation, what is the minimum amount or and the maximum amount of samples which we can use for the consolidation using your equipment? The equipment uh, in our lab now, Luis, in, in lab, I uh, think uh, for ski, for uh, iron alloys, uh, probably maybe one kilogram a time, because uh, iron is heavier than titanium. Titanium about, I uh, think about uh, 500 grams each time. Um, I think standard size, for standard size, for our, like uh, for uh, the, uh, research on uh, iron, I suggest that we we sort of uh, produce a, a reasonably large sample. So I suppose each time we probably need uh, maybe 800 grams, from 800 to, you know, around 800 grams of uh, uh, iron powder. Okay. Yeah, oh, of course, um, we, we need to add some, uh, add some, uh, uh, ferro iron, like uh, we need to add uh, some um, uh, iron carbon master alloy uh, and also other element in into this to produce a steel. Okay, well, he had told me before that he wanted to ask some questions. Narsi Boy, are you ready? Narsi? Narsi? Yeah. Okay, cannot, we cannot hear him. Cannot hear, maybe cannot hear. No, anyway, cannot hear him. You need to unmute, unmute your microphone. Yeah, maybe, Luis, could you control to... Yeah, okay, no, no, don't worry. Uh, he's, he needs to unmute his, his microphone. Yeah, okay, no, that's matter. Wait, another, 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 another person. Uh, Hugo Cabrera. Hugo Cabrera, Hugo. Hoy, hola. Pregunta. Eh, <coughs> en inglés. My question is, my question is about um, about the process of of boom. Bueno, eh, I am interested of, of the reduction of the of the of the compounds to form uh, the steel iron. I know that the the, the talk was about uh, titanium. Okay, it's okay. Titanium alloys. But my question is, what what is the difference? Uh, what will be the difference of the process 
if we if we use steel in, instead instead of of titanium and it will be the same or, or maybe another, another process of the in, in the in case of the consolidation mm. in the case okay the yes thanks. yes thanks that's an interesting question yeah uh, um yeah, it's, I think uh, it's the uh, the process is uh, uh, it's very much so. So uh, first, we'll do simple thing just by producing like a, a rod for so that just we do powder compact uh, extrusion. Uh, so the process is the same. Just the condition might be slightly different. Uh, for example, for uh, for iron powder. I think the temperature maybe is still similar. It's kind of similar. Maybe we we'll go to like 1200 degree Celsius. Yeah, it's very much the same. Very much the same. Yeah. Uh, for, certainly for steel, we will focus on producing uh, like uh, bars or uh, I don't think we, yeah, the bars could be a certain rectangular bar. Rectangle bars. For rectangle bars, later on we might uh, to try to use rolling to produce a plate. Um, uh, we will not do a component. We will not try to produce component for that. Yeah. So the process is very much the same. Okay. okay. About the the reduction process, for example, of our samples. Oh, the reduction. Oh, sorry, I, I missed that part. That part for, for the reduction for the reduction, uh, Luis, uh, as I mentioned to, to you know, as I mentioned when we had the discussion, uh, for the uh, for the powder from the uh, uh, rolling steel rolling plant, uh, steel rolling plant, and uh, that is mainly just a mixture of iron oxide. Is that right? The iron oxide. So yes. We will uh, we'll try to use the, oh, you need to use the uh, ca carbon reduction to see what the effect. But carbon reduction is very much a traditional uh, process, which um, uh, which is probably is not as clean as uh, hydrogen reduction. Uh, but carbon reduction is uh, easier to operate at the moment. So later on, we also try to use hydrogen reduction. So hydrogen of hydrogen is slightly more expensive than carbon. So so we will try to use carbon reduction first, and and then also use hydrogen reduction. So uh, reduction in terms of the uh, the scientific principle, reduction is is easy. It's okay, but uh, um, uh, we just need to do something more experiment um, yeah. to see like how fast. I like what's the reduction temperature we need and how fast the reduction will occur. And with carbon yeah. reduction, you know, whether we can completely reduce the oxygen oxygen from, you know, uh, from the oxide uh, and residue of oxide, which means we have to use hydrogen reduction to, uh, uh, to, to increase the, the level of reduction. Yeah. Okay, I, I will explain is in in Spanish in order to the they understand. Okay, in Spanish. Okay, I will explain. Okay, that part. Okay. Eh, eh, la reducción. El profesor Relian está diciendo dos, dos, dos alternativas. Primer lugar, antes de hacer la consolidación, el, antes de hacer la consolidación de, 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 del material, tiene que reducirse las muestras que se han traído de Perú. Entonces, hay dos métodos para reducir eh, rápidamente que se puede hacer aquí, en ese laboratorio. En primer lugar, el aprilo con carbón, los óxidos de hierro, mezclarlo con carbón, eh, que es una mezcla de, este, de, de óxido de hierro. Al mezclarlo con carbón, en atmósfera de, de argón y a altas temperaturas, eh, ese carbón va a reaccionar con el oxígeno, los óxidos de hierro, para formar... CO2. Entonces ahí va a salir los, eh, el óxido y va a quedar el hierro. Esa es la técnica número uno. La técnica número dos es, eh, en vez de car usar carbón, eh, se pone la muestra, el óxido de hierro, 
en una eh, atmósfera de hidrógeno, es más caro, eh, inclusive más. Y ese hidrógeno y altas temperaturas y presiones va a reaccionar con el oxígeno de los óxidos de hierro. Y al reaccionar con el oxígeno de los óxidos de hierro se va a formar H2O en forma de vapor. Se va a evaporar y va a quedar el hierro. Perfecto. Entonces, eso, y luego ya continúa con el, el ball milling para hacer el triturado. Luego continúa con la consolidación, la destrucción, el análisis de la... De la de, de las piezas metálicas que se va a desarrollar, eh, las partes mecánicas. Perfecto. Ok. I think that now, Narci Boya is ready now. Uh, Narci Boya, you have your question. Narci. Hello. Are you yeah, hearing me? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Good morning, sir. Hello. Ah, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, sir, I am from, I am from Boya Narsa, from India. Yeah. I'm from India. It's very... <laughs> that is the... Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I have one question, sir. Uh, titanium alloy is expensive. And what about the thermal stability of the material? Hello? Yeah, so you mean titanium? What about... Yeah, yeah, ex yeah it's expensive. And uh, what about the thermal stability of thermal uh, titanium alloy? Yeah, titanium alloy is also expensive, more, even more expensive. And what about the thermal stability of? Oh, even more stability of titanium alloy. Is, that, is your question about uh, thermal stability of titanium alloy? Ah, thermally, how stability? Thermally, thermally. So heating. Oh, titanium is very stable. Um, but uh, uh, no, I think titanium can work up to the temperature of 600. 600. Uh -huh. uh, uh, less than 600 is okay. Higher than 600 uh, need a special alloy because uh, titanium um, can become oxidized uh, at temperatures higher than 600. But yeah. Gen yeah, generally we have people using for the flight and all, it's more than 600. So sometimes it will be a disaster happen. Yeah, you're, you're right, you're right. Um, yeah, titanium is not, uh, I mean, the melting point is very high, but uh, compared with the melting point, uh, uh, titanium alloy is not very high temperature material, but it can be used up to uh, I think even 600 needs some special composition. Just uh, like a TR64, titanium 6 aluminum 4 with any metal, it can safely work at, uh, I think, up to maybe 500 degrees Celsius. Higher than that, the trouble, the trouble is that when the titanium alloy work at higher temperature, oxygen diffuses into the titanium, and it will make titanium brittle. So it's, it's, it it need it need a special composition to form a oxide layer which can stop stop the oxygen diffusion into this. Um, yeah, but but I, I think now this uh, uh, maybe some really high temperature time alloys can work at uh, 650 degree. But uh, for titanium for uh, material working at uh, say 700 degree or higher they need a titanium aluminide compound mm -hmm. titanium aluminum compound yeah it still cannot compete with uh, nickel based alloys yeah so so now there's a lot of work on titanium um, aluminide because titanium aluminide is only half of the density as uh, nickel alloys so really uh, advantage is light material for high temperature applications, but titanium alloys uh, uh, um, cannot work at so high temperature. Titanium aluminide can. Uh, titanium aluminide has a disadvantage of being brittle, so they try to uh, overcome that uh, difficulty. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, so... Uh, thank you. Okay. Okay. 
Eh, pregunta este, Maricel Espinosa Suárez. Una pregunta. Silvia Maricel Espinosa Suárez. Hi. Doctor Delian Sal. Yeah, hi, hi. Hi, how are you? Uh, ah, Silvia. I, Silvia. I agree with uh, Narcha. Um, it was very clear your your talk today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, I review um, some papers and I, I need to to explain if if it's possible um, the um, the recycling the uh, by spark plasma sintering. Do you know about that? Oh yeah, yeah. We we uh, like at Shanghai Jiaoming University we have a machine. We have a yeah. furnace, SPS furnace. Yeah, spark plasma sintering. Mm. Yes. Do you want to use what's, it? Or, uh, what's your question, Sylvia? To... Yes. Um, the plasma sintering. Yeah, if you want to use it, it's no problem. It's uh, it's not my lab anymore. Uh, sorry, it's not my laboratory anymore at Shanghai Jiaotong University. It's uh, really the laboratory which uh, uh, my group established when I work there. Uh, so my 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 colleague, my colleague. Uh, uh, running their lab, so it's no problem. If you want to use it, um, we can ask them to help. Okay, it's, it's nice. very interesting. Okay, yes. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Yeah, we, uh, we look forward to uh, your visit. Uh, to, to, uh, yes, I yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope uh, maybe yeah. uh, from the beginning. I, I don't know. Maybe towards the end of the year. Or? This, I yes, mean, the I borders are that. still not open yet. I think there's still, there's still um, limitation on applying for visas at the moment. I think. Yeah. I Let's hope. See, maybe it's, from it's November, finished. maybe yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bye. Bruce okay. and I, we all, all uh, my, our members of the group, who, uh, and and and. Uh, uh, Prata, you, you when could you come to visit the uh, Northeastern University? <laughs> yeah. Prata's here, I think, for the conference. Yeah, he, he, he was here, that's right. right. I also yeah, met Prata yeah, in New Zealand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Le, uh, Yes, yes, uh, the students, uh, Renato Valencia, uh, Luis Borja, tienen preguntas o preguntas de algún, del público. Luis no. Borja, si no lo tiene, no lo tiene. Bien, okay. si no lo tiene. We are, entonces, we are looking forward to a uh, visit from, uh, from the students at uh, Professor uh, Angels, when are you going to visit China? Professor Angel Gustante, when do you visit China? Maybe next year you could come to visit us. El otro año quizá. Professor Angels, the su microphone is not on. Su micrófono, profesor. Tiene que activar su micrófono. Sí. Uh, I don't know when you to visit. Um, I maybe need to next year. Maybe next year, if you could come with it. Yes, next year, maybe, maybe to. I like to go to China because I'm very interested in one and super no. Yeah, yeah. I think Luis may already told you that we have a professor um, uh, uh, high temperature supernatural. They, their group, uh, I think. Maybe it's a leading group in China. My interest is to to, to making this uh, a small a uh, motor using to cable from superconductivity. Oh really? Oh, that would be nice. A small yeah, motor you, because to, like a motor yeah. used for like bicycles something. Yes, uh, you have to coil. You have to uh, motor. Yes, you that that would mean the less energy consumption, isn't it? 
Yes, I have to. Uh, no, because uh, I one company in China. There is a uh, uh, Bismuth two, 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 three, a cable. So uh, on, you, on this cable, you put in one 